So everyone, good evening, good afternoon, whatever the time zone you are at. I'm really happy to join so many interesting discussions tonight. And um, I would like to introduce a great person, great academic, and I'm lucky to be a friend of this person who is uh, Dr. Claudio Milano. Uh, he's a social anthropologist uh, with a background in economics and currently he works at the University of Barcelona and he's a senior fellow, research fellow at the Ramon Cajal Fellowship, which he holds the fellowship. And his research uh, dwells around touristification processes, and uh, he explores how the societies respond and resist the changes through the social movements. Perhaps the easiest label to introduce Claudio is he's the professor of the over-tourism <laughs> research work, because he's done uh, loads of work together with Marina Novelli and uh, Joseph Cheer. And with no further ado, I would uh, like to uh, invite Claudio for his uh, presentation. And we are open for questions after the session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jana, for the presentation. Uh, thank you, Thomas, and um, all, um, all of you that you are behind and organized. Um, uh, these three intense days of discussion, uh, much needed actually. And uh, I will um, share my PowerPoint. Um, let's see if I have anything. Okay. Let me know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yes, yeah. perfect. Great. So my name is Claudio Milano. I'm a research fellow and professor at the Department of Social Anthropology at the University of Barcelona. And, and um, I am mainly uh, into the, the social uh, social science and research of, of um, the relation between uh, touristification processes and the production of poverty at some point, the production of inequalities. Uh, and uh, I, I mainly in, in research on, on the structural um, uh, inequality underneath the uh, um, uh, touristification and, and tourism industry. Um, um, I am also working for, as a consultant uh, in organization like uh, European Parliament or the um, uh, European Commission, in order also to work on those, you know, uh, uh, on on the on policy briefs and reports, uh, trying to highlight those inequality that are on the base of of what an industry like tourism um, produce. Because if on one end produce um, work, employment, and um, uh, and there's also allowed us to travel around the world, but there is a um, um, a debate uh, beyond that on the justice and mobility justice, because we know that most of the um, um, uh, most of the people um, on this globe they are not allowed not even to leave uh, their their own country. So uh, when we talk about the rights uh, of circulation, um, uh, uh, of course, is for 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 fears. Um, so today the idea is to share um, three main, uh, let's say, section of my presentation, uh, talking a bit about mobility justice and why tourism should be and 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 uh, tourism studies and also the social anthropological studies on tourism needs to address a uh, topic like mobility justice, and then how. Uh, in times of poly crisis, you know, tourism mobilities are part of 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 the um, uh, uh, of, uh, of of new regime of in mobilities of mobilities and immobility. And then just a couple of of I have, have, uh, example that we have had in Barcelona, so in the global north, and another one in the global uh, south of of um, of example that can works and can help 
probably not for structural change, but to 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 promote alternative within our our neoliberal and financial capitalism. Um, so when we talk about mobility justice, um, of course we have um, we have uh, several um, uh, several um, uh, research that have been working on, on the concept of mobility justice and also on 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 how in our in our society when we talk about spatial mobility uh, um, of course is related to the social mobility in and uh, uh, in our society and also of what has been called also the mobility capital of course if I am more mobile in our society in contemporary society I um, 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 it, uh, it also, of course, give me a, a status quo. Um, on the other hand, when we talk about immobility, mainly mobility studies has been uh, related on migration studies and on the idea of sedentarism as political subject that usually they are trapped or um, uh, they are also working in, uh, in, um, in tourist destination, but they, they, they are not allowed to move at some point they are not allowed to there is a a, a, a huge um and then um, a, a huge exploitation of course a labor exploitation in some of the most tourist uh, destination around the world uh, so on one end we have this dichotomy of what is mobility what is immobility what actually means those regime of immobility in our contemporary world uh, world and society and of course when we talk about mobility and immobility um, we need to take into account uh, um, those politics of the movements as me Michelle would say in his in his book mobility justice um in this sense, what we have seen, the capital, the capitalist rules of eight, 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 eight hour work, eight hour um, uh, sleep, eight hour for leisure is now completely blurred in our city, not just in Europe, uh, uh, but all over the world. And we are seeing more and more also tem temporary re residence and digital nomadism also in global south for, for the purchasing uh, power and of course for for, for an asymmetric power relation that we have, uh, are blurred. So we cannot talk anymore about, you know, like the global, the Northern global uh, tourists in, in, in destination uh, where he has um, um, uh, a, a huge, a huge um, uh, um, purchasing power, but of course those kind of mobilities between uh, temporary residents, international students in our city uh, are, um, are, um, are changing our way to understand tourism and mobilities. Um, in this sense, of course, when we talk about mobility justice, not mobility justice, uh, we are talking ab about a phenomenon uh, in a world of, fin uh, of fin um, finite resources. And in this sense, of course, the way in which we consume, and of course, the, the per capita emission across the world, and these were some uh, statistics, of course, you, you may know better than me, such, uh, such uh, uh, statistics and in general, uh, such um, inequality that we have also in terms of, of, of carbon emission. So um, we always see that a top percent of of uh, and the concentration of capital who con who, who, who concentrate capital of course um, uh, promote much more um, emission in terms of of, of of carbon emission so of course we need to talk about mobility justice and when we talk about uh, tourism uh, we talk about one of the of the industry that serve to uh, promote a lot of inequality and also as as um, as um, is, is fed by crisis, and now I would like to share with you some of those of those relations that um, the tourism industry has uh, with the um, uh, with the production of crisis, no, and the generation of crisis. So this condition of of mobility, Jassy, of course, uh, brings with it, and this is the. Um, um, a Banksy uh, work uh, and a painting, you know, that um, would probably um, uh, explain better the, of any words, you know, the modern slavery in tourism uh, and in tourism industry. Uh, of course, where, the place where I am talking is Barcelona and the place in which I am doing research have been mainly Northeastern Brazil, uh, where most of the um, uh, 
um, real estate capital after the 2008 uh, went in order to um, uh, uh, to fix the crisis of 2008 and also the South European um, uh, destination where I do research that oh, of course we 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 experience modern slavery in tourism at some point. So, and all those power struggle uh, um, uh, that highlight um, uh, those structure, structural inequalities that we have in our, in our world. So when we talk about tourism, of course, we heard a lot when I am in those um, Congress or seminar with the policymakers, uh, the use of the word sustainable tourism. Now we need to go for a sustainable tourism, but we know that sustainable tourism is an oxymoron, of course, until we are not having a, a real debate and a serious debate on decarbonization. Um, uh, so now, as you can see, Alitalia uh, promotes uh, the, the, the slogan born to be sustainable, but then if we still are a lead oriented carbon society, we cannot talk about any sustainable mo mo mobility at all. On the other hand, when we talk about tourism mobility and crisis, of course, working on tourism and looking at uh, this phenomenon and this industry is interesting because it helps us to think about how tourism has, has served to uh, promote new crises, but also as, as a served in the rhetoric of we use tourism to solve the present crisis. But every time that we have used tourism to solve the present crisis, we have promoted a new one. Now talking about poly crisis, um, uh, um, it seems like a, a buzzword, but on, on one end it can help us uh, to understand these overlapping crises that we are um, uh, living right, uh, experience right now, because we cannot understand uh, the COVID crisis without understanding the deforestation and the climate emergency and without uh, taking into account the financialization, fin financialization of our economy. Mm, so um, what, what is interesting, not just the interaction of and how so the interaction of those crises, but as Adam Toes would say, or Nancy Fraser would say so also, how those crises interact and why, in this case, that is my topic of, of the research, uh, how tourism play a key role on this interaction. So in this ep epochal crisis that we are um, uh, experiencing, those social ecological accumulation regime um, have been, have been the, the, uh, the way in which tourism has also helped to promote those accumulation by dispossession processes. And uh, how, how to solve crisis and why tourism has been, has been helpful to solve crisis, but to generate new ones. So in this sense, let me, let me show uh, you a couple of examples you may know, but of course for, for us that works in mobilities and in tourism, we always um, uh, bring, bring, uh, bring to the attention of our, of our students, of our audience, policymakers, when we have the chance to, to interact with policymakers, how before the 2008, of course, no one, no one of us knows those applications that are the main force in tourism, like Airbnb and Uber. I'm just um, uh, sharing, you, uh, sharing with you just two examples, but we have a lot of them. So actually, when we talk about platform capitalism and platform the cap tourism capitalism and this touristification of everyday life has brought us all those issue of and, and related issue of expansion, monopolization, and of course, invulnerability. And when we talk about tourification of everyday life, I remember always, and I recall always the slogan of Airbnb, of live like a local. This touristification of our daily life after, after the 2008 has been used, tourism and this touristification of daily life, to solve the financial crisis. But actually, it brought us to another crisis the over-tourism crisis. And over-tourism crisis seems also as a, as a, as a, um, as a, as a buzzword, but on one hand, you know, it, it comes uh, from, 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 uh, from the theory of overproduction and over-accumulation. Uh, over and in our history, and also recent history, we have er had a different kind of, of over-accumulation crisis, monoculture, overfishing, intensive farming, as you can see here, or the last one we were, uh, I was mentioning before, the sub subprime uh, mortgage crisis in 2007 and 2008. So over-tourism has been only one of the, 
of, of the crisis, in this case related with mobilities, but also based on how we have fixed the, re the previous crisis in tourism through platform capitalism. So when we talk about those kind of crises, um, and so we saw those uh, images of, of those uh, um, uh, uh, over um, uh, re reliant uh, and high depend on, uh, of, on tourism destination, we saw the overcrowding, you know, like the Louvre of, of the Rambla in Barcelona or some Yosemite or the Grand Canyon or the Himalaya full of, 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 of people. Actually, this is just what we can see. And there's also been used by the yellow journalism to talk about over tourism. But what we are not talking about is what is underneath that are, of course, issue related. And of course, I put in the bottom what is most important in our uh, social reproduction crisis in our society, the labor exploitation, as well as the outsourcing of employment, commercial gentrification, tourist oriented business versus resident tourism business, the fin financialization of housing, inflation, and the over reliance on, on the foreign investment. Uh, and also issue related to the uh, carbon emission climate emergency and this privatization of public space. Public space is an invention. No? Right now, uh, we can talk that almost all our spaces are private. And what is called public space is an invention of the neoliberal turn in the 90s. No, no uh, thinker, uh, a great thinker, James Jacobs, Henri Lefebvre, would talk about uh, public space in the 60s, 70s, or early 80s. From the late 80s, we start to talk about public space as a way to um, accumulate capital also in the urban spaces. So in this sense, now in 2020, you know, we are facing with this idea of digital nomadism, as you can see here again, this idea of uh, breaking the idea of, of old capitalist rules 888, but also with our financialization um, stage of, of the capitalist system, and of course, with an elitization. We want less people traveling abroad, so more inequality, of course, um, uh, um, that would increase, of course, the purchasing power and the rent cap and structural inequality in the in the periphery of pleasure, as, a, as um, um, uh, Turner Ash, two geographer, would, would uh, call it uh, in his book um, of, um, uh, golden horse, golden uh, golden horse, um, uh, talking about uh, tourism as a new tourist class and leisure class. Um, so we have seen now after the twenty two. Now we are again facing another over accumulation crisis. And a couple of months ago, in July, we had the new record of commercial flights worldwide. So tourism is is again um, uh, um, served to solve. The, 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 the crisis, but is bringing us to another crisis of the hyper-financialization and also the increasing uh, inequality of purchasing power in those host, uh, host places and destination. So just to end it up and to conclude, um, a look to structural changes. It's quite complicated to image uh, how, how can we, how can we um, uh, how can we fix at some point structural inequality? Also, if we talk about mobility and tourism, that is an, I, an industry that brings with it inequalities and works based on inequality and, and labor exploitation. Uh, but just to give you a couple of, of examples, the first one was in Barcelona of uh, from the Barcelona City Council. There was all a debate, I have been consulting uh, the, with, the, I would be a, a consultant for the Barcelona City Council. So I have been experienced a bit the debate that they have had regarding how to, um, uh, go from the promotion to the governance, to govern tourism, and of course, to minimize those inequalities. So they had a, this debate on trying to promote the social return of tourism investment. So as you can see there of this logo, red logo, uh, that is in Catalan stays for uh, finance with the tourist tax. Usually, at least in, in, the, in the European context that I know better uh, than, than other contexts, um, we, we have used the tourist tax to promote our destination. Uh, but the Barcelona City Council has tried to reinvest in local 
um, local um, um, uh, local initiative, local festival, also uh, local um, um, uh, infrastructure. So there was this debate of trying to to shift. Uh, the, the, at least the imaginary that we have of this industry, tourism in a city, over tourism city like Barcelona, from the extraction to the redistribution. Of course, this is not a structural change, but probably could be the starting point of the debate on uh, this social return of tourism investment. But also, uh, it should go through other debates like the labor exploitation that we have in a, in, a, in a city and in a country like Spain. On the other hand, another example was try to govern the financialization of housing with the PEWAT. Those two uh, initiatives that I am sharing with you uh, are um, were made by um, uh, the former um, uh, mayor, Ada Colau, that now is, she is not more in the power. And for the first time, a city council governed tourism um, was talking about degrowth. So all these areas that you can see here in red, uh, the zone one, um, uh, all this area was declared like the growth zone. So they were not giving any more license uh, for tourist apartment. And this was in 2016. So it was quite pioneer. Now we are having in New York the, deba the debate on Airbnb, but this one was already a, a, an initiative made uh, in 2016 and was trying to shift and govern the financialization and to shift from the merely promotion to the governance. Does it solve the problem? Of course not, but it's a way to starting, um, as a way to begin to have a serious debate on how to govern our city. On the other hand, um, um, uh, on the other hand, uh, um, on the on the in the global south and rural destination, we have seen, for example, and I have been working and living one one year and a half between uh, the state of Sierra and Piauí, working on on uh, community based tourism. With this evergreen debate of does tourism will help the poor community and you know this idea of poor, pro poor tourism PPT that could be could be really dangerous at some point. This idea of the poverty, how we can promote development in a poor community, but has been um, promoted in different in different uh, um, in different. Um, um, uh, destination and of course also with network and um, with um, uh, with a well known organization that we have in the Ibero American Ibero American content that is Al Basud uh, they do research I am part of that but they mainly do research and communication for the development trying to work on networks and of course working from bottom up approach. Um, um, uh, with community-based tourism project in which the community, a local community, they have a, 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 predominant, a, a predominant role in terms of the organization and co-design co of the project. Um, other project that we have seen that could be probably uh, uh, interesting to have this serious debate on structural changes and how we can revert those injustice that we have within carbon um, uh, emission and inequality that we have in those um, hyper mobile context in which we have a trapped immobile sedentary uh, labor labor force so it was for the, the, the project of working on carbon neutral tourists or carbon uh, neutral uh, destination uh, with the social carbon found so working on, on local destination rural destination to to uh, to work on the reforestation based on the um, calculation of the, of the carbon emission of those people that that visit uh, that visit those destinations. Um, uh, this was a bit my my uh, my uh, uh, the, 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 um, the some reflection that I I wanted to share with you. I always uh, use this um, uh, sentence from an Asian proverb: "Tourism is like fire; you can cook with it, but it can also burn your house down." In sense that, of course, has been a great uh, a great industry that has helped us to. Um, um, uh, to meet each other and to, of course, uh, 
uh, try to promote more tolerance among uh, culture and and, and different um, and, and different country but on the other hand of course brings with it a lot of inequalities in terms of labor exploitation in terms of um, um, uh, expulsion and expropriation also in terms of land grabbing for example in the in the rural uh, in, the, in 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 rural um, uh, destination in in Latin America um, for example but on the other hand, we need to have a serious discussion on mobility justice when we talk about uh, poverty alle alleviation, when we talk about uh, global, uh, global justice and mobilities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you so much for your insightful presentation. I would just ask for a second uh, if anyone has a question uh, to ask so just right now. Mihai. I think the, the, la, the last day is coming to an end, but I see Mihai is putting the hand up. Please go ahead. Yes. Claudio, thank you so much for the presentation. It's really, really interesting. Um, and I was, uh, uh, when when you got to the slide talking about the digital nomads and, uh, um, and you know, you know, people that are traveling around, you know, the, to, to work in certain places, I uh, I uh, remembered a study that was recently um, released by Ashoka, and uh, they uh, were studying uh, the intervention and response on Ukraine in various countries, in Germany, Romania, Czech Republic, Poland, some other countries. And what, what it was interesting that the way they approached the subject was people on the move. Uh, and it's actually very true because, yes, people left Ukraine uh, because of the invasion by the Russian Federation. But then uh, we had uh, the, the issue on the, the border was that uh, these people could enter EU space with their passport uh, if they had uh, the, the biometric passport as tourists. So there were people that were, were fleeing a, a war area, but then they, they were considered tourists. So it was uh, uh, also a, a challenge for all EU countries. And that's when you know the uh, temporary protection uh, kicked in and, and so on. And we had cases now and uh, we, we I participated um, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, evacuating now, like two weeks ago, uh, Ukrainian citizens from, Ga from, uh, from, uh, from Israel now. And then I was talking to them when they got to the, um, to the airport because the embassy in Tel Aviv, Ukraine embassy asked us for uh, support, uh, some four planes. Uh, to be evacuated through through Romania, so it's like we said yes, of course. And then we got when we got there, we we started to talk with uh, with uh, these uh, these people, and uh, most of them they were saying that's the second time in one year and something that they are fleeing uh, an area area a war area. But then uh, you have people that somehow we have to integrate them in in uh, not tourism, of course, but it's a kind of uh, uh, the way now things are are happening, you have uh, like uh, a few million of uh, millions of Ukra Ukrainians that are all over EU only if we consider EU, and then it's um, uh, well, it's it's a common, but then it's also the the question: Do you also look into into this? Uh, and if you enlarge when you say uh digital nomads you look more into all these people on the move because there are more more uh clusters and groups there thank you so much thanks mihai for 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 the for the uh, question and also for this insight uh, inside reflection because actually when we talk about uh, mobilities actually the mobility star has been uh, promoted by the the, the English uh, sociology uh, um, uh, from John Harvey and so on that comes with this idea that we need to talk about mobility it's more than migration and and tourism and we need to talk about those people on the move and on one end has been a great theoretical framework that has helped uh, help us a lot to talk about mobility on the other I do use it, but I am afraid that is a way to a conflictivize 
the problem of, of mobilities because we have mobility injustice more than only justice. And actually the example that you brought is an example of, of people on the move, but of course people on the move based on migration of war and and uh, and actually when you when you ask if I look at them, I look at them, but of course not in the in the case of the Ukraine refugees, but I uh, I am studying right now and I'm doing research with migrant workers from Asia, from Pakistan and from India as the main labor force into this destination. Because now with all those changes and of course also with the pandemic, we have a lot of people that they don't work anymore with low salary in tourism as we were used to have here in the South of Europe, Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, uh, Greece, I depend on tourism countries. Um, so I, I look at them, I look on those people on the move, but most of those people on the move, they are people trapped after the move because then they are stuck, for example, if we are talking about extra communitarian, working in a, in a place um, uh, in which, um, uh, you know, like they, they don't have the, 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 the opportunity to, to, to move uh, um, as, as, as others. Um, so of course, when we talk about mobilities, we need to take into account all those, all those people on the move, but on, 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 on one way, we have people on the move within Ukraine, for example, that have, have the, the opportunity to work abroad, still if they, they flee from, from, uh, from Ukraine, but then we have a lot of Ukraine workers that now they are working, for example, in tourism or in other industry, and not, right now they are, uh, uh, they are migrant workers and they are, um, uh, they are part of this labor force in some of our um, European destinations. Um, and of course, actually, what you mentioned um, yeah, is really interesting because we have seen a displacement and, and, and a great entrance of Ukraine workers in tourism in several countries in Europe. And now it represents a labor force. But unfortunately, it's also a labor force that has been exploited in the last years. So we need to look at them and, of course, are part of this mobility, mobility paradigm um, uh, of nowadays. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. I think uh, William has another question. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this is William from Kenya, and that was really amazing. Um, just uh, I appreciate Claudia's comments in regard to his experience in Europe. And um, being from Kenya, I wanted to post a question in regard to Africa. Uh, what is your view in regard to the tourism neglect on issues of environment and climate change in Africa, probably from general point of view? And this is more of subjective question. The second point is the issue of tourism and exploitation of local culture. It wasn't in your presentation, but will you mind saying something about it? Thank you. Okay, th thank you for your for your for your question, um, um, uh, William. Um, uh, okay, regarding the first one, regarding the African context, of course, I'm not a specialist, but I do work a lot with the specialists in the African context. Is Marina Novelli, and she works a lot on this, uh, and uh, she would probably um, answer better than me on this. But what we have seen in the African context, but of course, Africa. You know, uh, we need to talk about uh, country by country, and there are different uh, different situations. Like, for example, uh, if we talk about um, the, the West Coast in Senegal, with uh, with uh, a land a huge land grabbing uh, phenomenon by French and Spanish um, uh, Spanish um, uh, um, industry, or for example, the hotel uh, the hotel uh, um, industry. Spanish hotel industry in Morocco, but then if we go on 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 other on other uh, on other countries like Kenya, also there are other 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 different phenomena, but mainly on what the Orthodox Marxism would give us in terms of, of uh, theoretical tools of um, expropriation and exploitation. That's what we have seen so far. Also in terms of 
not recalling uh, Nancy Fraser, the regime of social accumulation, social ecological accumulation in the in the in the natural and natural park in in um, in the context of of, uh, of different African countries. No? Uh, imagine, for example, the the, uh, the the gorilla safari and the gorilla market in Rwanda. No, just just to mention some. And then on the other part, on the other for the other question, the second one, William, regarding the cultural uh, appropriation or cultural, um, uh, you know, deterritorialization, uh, as a geographer would say, it's quite complex because you know culture is always on the move and culture always change. Um, so tourism is also part um, of of um, of a great of a great um, uh, interchange. But on the other, of course, there are asymmetric power relations. And within these asymmetric power relations, um, we know, for example, there are a lot of researchers uh, with, uh, with um, uh, Maasai in Kenya regarding you know, how has been um, uh, folklorized the figure and the, the, the imaginary of, of the Maasai. And then we can, uh, we, we have plenty of examples, not just in the African context, um, in which, of course, this commodification of culture uh, has been part of of this of of the performative turn in tourism, you know, of this or what has been called in tourism the the tourism experience, and we in which of course asymmetric power relation uh, um, um, made unfortunately uh, um, uh, more and more increase the, uh, the the folklorization. So in this sense, um, that's why we need to work always in order to have more and more bottom-up approach tourism project also at a small scale. That's why community-based tourism in some country in Africa, also in Latin America or in Southeast Asia has, has uh, have been a great example in which community have been part of what they want to sell of their of their own culture, no? What they want to show of their own culture. But on the other hand, we, what do we have seen so far globally has been an extraction of those uh, 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 of those um, uh, patterns and cultural patterns. So of course, it's something that uh, should be taken into account, and we need to to critically research, critically look at those phenomena of expropriation and. Um, um, uh, of, uh, and, and folklorization of local tradition. Thank you so much um, for the question.